First, the Greek word for repent is metanoio. It simply means to change one's mind or purpose. That's all it means. It doesn't mean anything else than that. And if you've heard it explained some other way, that is incorrect. Paul never uses this term ever. Go through his epistles and you will not find him say it. He never uses it in conjunction with salvation or the reception of the Spirit. Never. The closest he ever gets to this is in 1 Corinthians 7 verse 10, where he says, For godly sorrow produces repentance, leading to salvation, not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world produces death. Paul does not mean that repentance is necessary for salvation. He is saying that godly sorrow for one's state in life will lead them, hopefully, to seek out the salvation found in Christ. It is a changing of the mind. It must be remembered that salvation is based on faith in what Jesus Christ did, not on works. One cannot be saved by merely repenting from sin. If a drunk gives up drinking and yet has no faith in Christ, he will never be saved. Paul's words cannot be used in and of themselves to say repentance leads to salvation. But that is how Ray Comfort presents his message. You must do this in order to be saved. If someone does give up his sins based on what Ray Comfort says, it does not mean that he is any closer to God than before giving them up. Instead, it is the grace of Christ which saves. The repentance of a sin may lead to faith in him, or it may not. Either way, it is only by grace through faith that one is saved. On the other hand, there is a sorrow of the world that Paul also writes about. There are many types of sorrow in the natural world. If we are sorry over losing a bank account full of money, that doesn't lead us to God. Instead, it just leads to frustration and bitterness. If we are sorry over losing our girlfriend, that hasn't helped us in our spiritual life at all. Instead, it is simply a sorrow which is natural and of this world. For the drunk who gives up drinking, if he is sorry for being a drunk because it led him to lose his job, he may change his mind. Repent, give up drinking, and get his job back. In this, he may become proud and say, look at what I have done. This sorrow then only produced death in him because of the sin of pride. Ultimately, through such sorrow, there can only be regret. In the end, It produces nothing concerning salvation, but it continues to produce death in the unbeliever. But this is what Ray Comfort adds to his gospel as he says, you must repent, turn from your sin, and come to Jesus. Those words are not found in the gospel which we read earlier in 1 Corinthians 15, and thus they are an addition to the gospel. Let's read it again. I'm going to take you back to 1 Corinthians 15, verses 3 and 4. For I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to Scripture, that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. As there can be no addition to the gospel, then it is a false gospel. Always be careful when handing out tracts that the Ray Comfort false gospel is not a part of the tract that you are handing out. For